In JavaScript, the equal sign is an assignment operator. This sounds more confusing than it is. It just means that the value of the left operand is equal to the right operand. In the equation x equals y, the equal sign assigns the value of y to x. This is important because it allows us to compute values of two different data types, such as numbers and strings. Let's take a look at an example. In this JavaScript code, we're adding a numerical value with a text string. If we save the file and preview it in our web browser, we can see that the numerical value 30 is attached to the text string hats. Arithmetic operators are used to perform arithmetic on numbers, both constants and variables. This chart provides a quick overview of the different operators that can be used. Now let's go over some examples to see how each one works. We'll begin by adding two numerical values. In between our open and close script tags, we'll create a variable called x. The value of x will be 100 plus 50. Next, we'll create our get element by ID. And the ID will be the word add. Now we'll go ahead and create the paragraph that will contain the outputted value. Okay, now let's go ahead and save our file and preview it in our web browser. And we can see that we get the value 150, which is the correct value. Now let's go ahead and perform another calculation. This time we'll add two values and multiply the result by the value of another variable. So let's go ahead and define two variables. Variable A, which will equal 3 variable B, which will equal 20 plus 30 multiplied by A. So in this case, it'll be multiplied by 3. Now we'll just create our output. Uh, we'll call the ID add 2 and we'll display the result underneath our first calculation. And we'll save the file and refresh our web browser. So here we have once again 150 outputted. Okay, so that would be uh, 20 plus 30 which is 50 multiplied by 3 which equates to 150. Okay, in this next example, we'll subtract two values. We'll call the variable C, and we'll do 100 minus 50. And this time, we'll give it the ID sub, and we'll output the result at the bottom of our other two calculations. And there we have it. So that's how we multiply, add, and subtract. In this lesson, we'll explore a few other arithmetic operators. We'll begin with division. In this example, we'll divide two values together. 
We'll start by declaring a variable. We'll call it d. The value of d will be 100 divided by 50. Next, we'll set up our output. We'll call the id div i. And we'll set up a paragraph in our body tag to display the output. And once we save our file, we'll go ahead and preview it in our, in our web browser. And we can see that the correct value is outputted. Next, we'll increment the value of variable. So to do that, uh, for this example, we'll, we'll go ahead and declare a, a variable called x and give it the value of 5. Next, type in x plus plus and a semicolon. This will increment the value of x by 1. So if x equals 5, the next value up would be 6. We'll store the incremented value in a variable called z. And then we'll go ahead and set up our output. Now we'll go ahead and save the file and refresh our web browser and we can see the value 6 outputted below our last calculation. We can also decrement the value of a variable. So instead of going up, uh, this time we'll set up a calculation, or sorry, an arithmetic that decreases the value of the variable. So instead of going from 5 to 6, we'll go from 5 to 4. We'll set up a new variable and we'll call this variable h. Next type in h minus minus and a semicolon. We'll store the new value in a variable called k and set up our output. I will save our file and refresh our web browser and we can see that uh, the value of k is outputted. Operator precedence determines the order in which operations are performed in an arithmetic expression. As in traditional school mathematics, the order of computations follows the following sequence. Brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. To illustrate this example, let's take a look at a basic equation. Here, we have 50 plus 200 in brackets multiplied by 3. In this equation, 50 would be added to 200 first. The result would then be multiplied by 3. We'll go ahead and test this in our web browser. And we can see we get the correct result, 750. JavaScript variables can hold many data types, including numbers, strings, arrays, and objects. On this slide, we can see that the first variable, age, contains a single numerical value, 16. The second variable, last name, stores a string, Johnson. The variable cars 
stores multiple strings, this is known as an array. We'll explore arrays in more detail later in this course. The last variable, person, is an object. Object variables also store multiple values, but each value is relevant to an assigned property. For this reason, each name and value in an object is referred to as a single property. In this case, first name John is our first property of the object person. Don't worry if you find this confusing. We'll work with objects later in this course. 